To start the second half of the program, I'd like to invite to the stage Bill Mandigo, who will introduce Jennifer Hefner Carbone. Have you, have you ever met someone who was so athletic, they were good at everything they did? Someone who could run, skate, shoot a puck, throw a lacrosse ball, or kick a soccer ball? Let me introduce that person to you. She is Jennifer Hefner Carbone perhaps the best athlete I've seen in all of my years at Middlebury. Jen was smart, competitive, and extremely unselfish. And she made all of her teammates better players. And she put Middlebury women's hockey on the map. Jen came to Middlebury in the fall of 1993 after graduating from Loomis Chafee. Her coach, Chuck Vernon, who is here tonight, told me a story about Jen when she was a young player at Loomis. Jen was skating in on a 2-1-1 with a player who was not very good. The play called for Jen to pass the puck to her teammate, but she kept the puck herself and scored the goal. When she skated to the bench, Chuck asked her why she didn't pass the puck to her teammate, and Jen said, why? She wouldn't have caught it anyway. Chuck told, Chuck told Jen it was the responsibility to make the right play not to worry if the player could or could not receive the pass. After that, Jen always made the right play. As a soccer player at Middlebury, Jen played on teams that had a combined uh, 29 wins, tw combined record of 29 wins, 20 losses, and six ties. She is still the fifth leading scorer in the history of Middlebury women's, hockey, women's soccer with 76 points. Jen was also an outstanding lacrosse player. She started at attack as a freshman and sophomore, scoring 51 goals and assisting on 23 others in only 32 games. One of Jen's former teammates said, and I quote, that Jen had great stick skills, outstanding vision, was comfortable carrying the ball in traffic, and always knew when to shoot or distribute the ball. The team she played on were the first Middlebury women's lacrosse teams to make the NCAA Final Four. And at the end of her sophomore year, Jen was selected as a regional All-American. But Jen's best and favorite sport was hockey. As a, as a Middlebury hockey player, she is second to none. Her teams had a combined record of 65 wins and 33 losses. Not too impressive, but 25 of the losses were to Division I teams. In a, te in a time when the only hockey being played was in the East, Jen's teams won back-to-back -back ECAC Division III championships her junior and senior year. In other words, they were the best Division III teams in the country. Here are Jen's statistics as a hockey player. Freshman year, 49 points. Sophomore year, 48. Junior year, 66. Senior year, 53, for a total of 216. Remember, she played a third of her games against Division I opponents and she is still the second leading scorer in the history of Middlebury women's hockey with 216 points and 91 goals and 125 assists. I guess she listened to Chuck Vernon about making the right play. In 1996 and 1997, Jen was awarded the ECAC player, EC player of the Year, which really meant that she was the Division III National Player of the Year for two straight years. With today's athletes specializing in one sport at an early age, I often wonder if there are other Jen Hefters out there who never get the opportunity to learn the lessons from or to excel at more than one sport. Ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer Hefner Carbone. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Aaron, and the Hall of Fame Committee for this incredible honor. Thank you, President Patton, for supporting and hosting this special evening. Congratulations to all of the other athletes being honored tonight. It feels extra special to be alongside so many familiar names. Fred Beams, a fellow Loomis Chafee Pelican, my friend and classmate Dates, his father, um, a few other athletes in overlapping classes, but most of all, Mr. Lawson, who would have been a part of my speech no matter what, and I'm so happy I can recognize you in person. 
As the athletic director during my four years at Middlebury, you, be, you built the foundation for the championship programs in existence today, no question. But what I remember and admire most about, your loyalty, about you was your loyalty and commitment to each and every individual athlete. I'm so happy, honored, and proud to be here with you tonight, and thank you for all of the support you gave me during my time at Middlebury. I have a bunch of thank yous, so please bear with me for a few minutes. Um, as a parent uh, to ch three children myself, I now truly realize just how much my parents sacrificed for me. Mom and Dad, your work ethic and commitment to not only financially support the countless activities and tuitions, but to actually be there for almost every single game, hosting team dinners, countless tailgates, you name it. I know it sounds cliche, but my parents are really the main reason I'm standing up here right now, so thank you. <clears throat> Kelly and Brian, my sister and brother, both Middlebury alums, you've been two of my biggest fans and cheerleaders, which means so much to me, especially given their own athletic accomplishments, significant athletic accomplishments. My brother, an all-state swimmer and diver. My sister, also a three-sport athlete here at Middlebury, a teammate and coach in soccer, ice hockey, and an all-American lacrosse player. I'm so blessed to have such a supportive family. Thanks to my husband, Steve, who to this day calls me the BH, which stands for the ball hog. Um, I'm hopeful that the assist stats might reprieve me of that nickname, but um, I doubt it. In all seriousness, my husband quietly does so much behind the scenes so that I can continue to get my sports fix, playing in my adult soccer and ice hockey leagues, and coaching my kids' teams. So thanks for all that you do. And to my three biggest achievements in life, my kids, uh, Quinn, Luca, and Cece. I love them all so much. They're not here tonight, you're lucky, <laughs> because they'd be going crazy. Um, but there's no statistic or honor that's greater than being their mom. I'd like to recognize my teammates. I played with a really fun, and I'm told that the teams, or the, the players don't have quite as much fun as we did um, these days, but <laughs> a fun, special group of um, players who obviously made me a better teammate and player, um, but really um, who, who taught me how to be a good person and a friend. And I'm so lucky that you guys are here, and I feel so, I'm just so happy that Whit, Lane, and Vanessa are here tonight celebrating with me. So a few more. Uh, my coaches, I'm pretty confident that I had the three best coaches in the game. Chuck Vernon, or Bruno, my high school coach who taught me all of the fundamentals of a good athlete. The foundational skills, of course, but most importantly, how to be sportsmanlike and what it means to be humble and appreciative of your teammates, and apparently how to pass the, pass the puck. Um, thanks for being here tonight, and just for the record, I wrote this speech before, so I didn't even know you were going to be here, so I would have said these words anyway. Um, Bill Beanie who only officially coached me for my first year of soccer, but was a constant role model and advocate of mine as the head of the men's hockey program during my four years at Middlebury. I was pretty lucky to get you as my first ever coach at Middlebury. Um, Bill Beanie set the bar very high. And Bill Mandigo, as my second ever coach at Middlebury, you definitely met that bar. And I would say exceeds, but I know that you're both in the room, so I'll let you guys hash that one out. Um, but it goes without saying that Bill Mandigo built the nationally recognized hockey program at Middlebury, hands down. There are countless memories that I could rattle off. Some, as we joked about earlier this week, best shared over dollar beers at Mr. Ups. Um, but the one that I've taken with me through all parts of my life was something that Bill used to say to us at some point during almost every practice or game, on the ice and off the ice, control what you can control. It's pretty simple, really, but it's stuck with me and continues to ground me in my everyday life. Personal, professional, with my children, in my marriage, most definitely in my marriage. Um, it's all about focus, tuning out the noise, honing in on what you, individually or as a team, can do to accomplish a goal. If you fail, it's okay, provided you gave it your all. It's about embracing challenges, being accountable, persevering through obstacles, and overcoming adversity. 
There's a big buzz these days in all walks of life. I certainly hear it thrown around in good old corporate America all the time. Having a growth mindset. People pay lots of money in psychotherapy these days for what Bill taught us on the bus, in the locker room, and on the ice 24 years ago. Way ahead of the times, Bill. There, were, there was no shortage of fun at Middlebury. I could be here all night telling stories about the parties, the tailgates, J-term, ski, ski trips, fall and spring hikes, Lions Place creamies, a and open, opening day, Noonies sandwiches. There was no shortage of fun at Middlebury. But unfortunately, our class also experienced some sadness. There were some tragedies, friends lost. And it was in these moments that I saw what ultimately stands out to me as Middlebury's best quality, the community. People coming together to be here for one another, to support and have each other's backs, prioritizing and focusing on what matters, the well-being of the people in their community. Being on a team at Middlebury was like being a part of this small, tight family within an even greater community. I'm so fortunate to be a part of it. I want to close out with a shout out to my friend Amy Diadimo Foster. I'll save this for the last in case I get a little teary. I had the incredible honor of playing soccer and lacrosse with Amy and was roommates with her my senior year. While Amy and I fell out of touch, in and out of touch over the years, I now think of her every day, as I know many of you do in this room. Her natural athleticism, her drive, her smile, her stellar beer pong game. Amy keeps me in check. She gives me perspective. Because at the end of the day, you can do everything right, but sometimes life is not fair. So we need to control what we can control, do what we love, love what we do, be forgiving, be kind, be happy, work hard, play hard, Love yourself, your friends, your family, and your community. Thanks, Middlebury, for everything.